my god look at this look at this look at this alec oh boom boom hey what is up guys guitar here welcome back to another brown dust video all right today we're going to specifically focus on alec and alec is alec still one of the best warriors in my opinion so we're going to talk about him for a bit in this video and what are the common combos that Alec players usually use? And what should you look out for if you're trying to recruit and build your own Alec? Alright, let's dive into it. Alright, I want to jump off into the video straight up by saying, Today, if you're looking to invest in like a decently good legendary, one of the six devils specifically. I'm not talking about the Dominus Octos, I'm talking about the six devils. Alec might actually be the best choice for your investment in terms of being cheap and reliable at low skill level and also having the consistent output damage that you can expect since he deals fixed damage and he's, he won't be able to deal additional crit damage or things like that so you won't have to worry on investing in like a proper good fatal and rage rune all right so alec is still one of the better warriors to have uh, if you have alec most likely you will never ever need wilhelmina um, unless you are just trying to specifically counter Lucius and you really really hate Lucius since he's like everywhere. But if you have Alec, basically he fits that role of fixed damage where Wilhelmina is not really fully covering. She's sort of... Wilhelmina is gonna deal with 100% defense units. Units like Aaron, units like Lillian, but in terms of units with high incoming damage reduction, so something like a Livia for example. So Livia with this particular skill right here, incoming damage minus 65% and this incoming damage reduction. So this is going to reduce Wilhelmina's attack significantly. But Alec, Alec can penetrate through all of this because he deals fixed additional damage. All right, so fixed additional damage means that he will always deal consistent damage regardless to an enemy unit with high defense or an enemy unit with high incoming damage reduction. So that is always almost always going to be consistent. So one thing to note about Alec is when you look at his skill levels, you're going to notice that he will have this particular skill lock until he is at plus 3. This skill right here, man, this skill is insane. Alright, so attack times 200% additional damage. So deals additional damage when HP is below 99%. So this is going to be really, really insane. The amount of damage that Alec will be able to dish out whenever you unlock him at plus 3. But at plus 0, I believe he is extremely usable. He might actually be the most usable out of the 6 devils. In terms of like straight up out of the box, plus 0. No investment required, just slap 2 assault runes into him and he's going to do his job just bashing away enemies in campaign mode, in evil castle, in arena or whatever. He's just going to always give you the consistent output damage. So this particular skill, uh, attack plus 50%, so keep that in mind that he will always have this activated. So this means that he's going to be prone to incoming damage as well. So it's going to boost incoming damage that he will receive. Uh, which means Alec is pretty squishy. Um, if you are placing him in your formation, it's highly recommended that you have a bunch of taunts just to protect your Alec because if Alec gets hit, there's no way he could live. Almost always, he's always going to die. So you want to make sure that he's well protected because he's just extremely squishy. So these are the stats that Alec has. Assuming you're going to max awaken him and everything, uh, crit rate and crit damage irrelevant on him because he's not going to be able to benefit from those. Uh, you are only going to use his attack mainly. So two assault runes, that's the way to go. Alright, so at plus zero, basically you want to focus on giving him just pure attack. So you want to focus on supporters that can give him just that. Alright, so straight up out of the box, the best candidate is probably Arinus. So between Arinus and Hunewall for 3 stars, definitely go for Arinus. Hunewall gives a bit of crit rate and crit damage which Alec doesn't need. So Arinus will definitely fit that role in buffing him even better. Alright, so up to plus 1 and plus 2, you're getting the fixed additional damage increases significantly. But at plus 3, this particular skill, Atrocious Wrath, this is something that requires a little bit of skill to use. Like I mentioned earlier, Alec is almost always going to die whenever he gets hit. Uh, even my Arkan or my Lucius can occasionally one-shot him. So if you're not careful, 
he's going to die. You don't want to expose him. But how do you how do you use this skill? How do you activate this skill? That's where Michaela jumps in. All right, so let's have a look at Michaela for a short moment. All right, so why Michaela? Michaela is the only few supporters that has this particular skill right here. All right, notice what this skill gives. All right, it gives attack. It gives some sort of protection which reduces incoming damage and it consumes the allies max HP all right so that means that 33 consumption this is going to consume quite a number of HP from Alec your Alec is going to be able to benefit from the atrocious rough skill okay so this is something to keep in mind and I believe Michaela is the only supporter currently as of today when making this video maybe in the future we'll see like a four star version of Michaela that can do similar things. I'm not sure if that's possible. Maybe it is. But as of right now, Michaela is the only supporter that has this ability to basically uh, take away a little bit of HP away from Alec. So, is it worth it for Alec to go all the way to plus 10? Alright, so let's have a look at the skill and let's analyze it together. Remember, whenever you are putting uh, skill books, especially the legendaries, you gotta keep in mind like, is it worth it? Is it worth doing it? For me, uh, ideally plus 3 is more than enough. This attack times 200% additional damage, this is insane. This this amount of attack that you get from this particular atrocious ref is alone is just pure insanity. I don't see a reason why you want to go beyond that, but what happens if you go beyond this, right? So at plus 4, it increases by 15%, so 145% as opposed to 130, and then at plus 5, you get the 160%. So plus 6 uh, is where you get the least amount of investment. So this particular skill, attack plus 50%, incoming damage plus 35%, so it just reduces the incoming damage by 15%. I'm not sure if that will help you to your Alec to survive because it's only 15% difference. At plus 7, you can see once you reach plus 6 onwards, the return of investment of how much you spend your legend skill books doesn't seem to give that much in return. Like 15% uh, reduces incoming damage, minus off, increase in 10% from 50% in the attack. 60%, uh, 70%. And then when we go all the way to plus 9, so you get the healing. So this one can be good or can be bad, it really depends, right? If your Michaela is always alive, to always take away the 35% uh, consumption of HP, that's a good thing. But if your Michaela is dead and your Alec heals up to 100% HP, you won't be able to benefit from the atrocious ref. So I don't like how this skill interacts with each other, it's kind of hard to utilize it correctly. So I, unless you can guarantee that your Michaela and your Alec will all, both always be alive, to be able to, to buff and interact with each other. Otherwise, it's kind of a risky thing to actually skill him up to plus 9. Like, I can't believe I'm saying this, but it's actually risky to skill up Alec to plus 9. Like, it's much safer to leave him at plus 8 if you are trying to combo him with a Michaela. Alright, so at plus 10, this particular skill, the Atrocious Wrath, increases to 250%. So that 50% additional damage Seems like a lot, right? Seems like a lot. Definitely he's going to one hit KO anyone by now. But trust me, I don't think the investment are worth it. So I do think that a plus 3 Alec is basically the best Alec. Like that's the best in terms of getting the return of investment of all the legend skill books and also the balance of the output damage that you are getting. Alright, so going beyond that, Sure, you're getting incremental upgrades, but I don't think it's worth it. It's just the payoff is a little bit, it's just too little for me. All right, but that's my opinion as always. So let's jump into a couple of PvP battles. I'm going to show you guys a bunch of formations. Hopefully you guys will learn a thing or two from all of these formations. So I'm going to jump off straight by saying that Alec fits into the meta very well right now because of plenty of heroes, right? So Lillian, Alec can get rid of Lillian easily. Same goes for Walia. Walia is a very tanky unit. If you have a Foxy, usually Walia can struggle. So it's quite dependent on who he encounters, but there's a lot of meta heroes that Alec do counter. So look at this. Boom! Ho ho! That is insane. That is insane. Alright, Veronia buffing Alec is usually a good idea. That gives him 
uh, the insane amount of damage that he needs. But if you don't have a Veronia, a Serubia could work as well. So Serubia to Alec is extremely strong since Serubia gives like insane high amount of attacks. Okay, so this Alec is a plus zero. So for a plus zero Alec, typically Veronia, Serubia, those are the ideal supporters that you want to have. But if you have a plus three Alec, a Michaela would give you much more output damage compared to a Veronia because getting the atrocious ref off that 200% additional damage is going to give you much much more all right so looks like this battle is done for or is it that Mamonair and Velfen still hanging on in there am I winning or am I losing what's happening right here all right maybe I'll lose this one I have no idea energy guard du -du -du. plus two plus ten it's a plus 10 Velfern. Never underestimate a plus 10 Velfern. Oh! Okay, this is one more good example from a user called Argonauts. I really like this formation a lot. So this user, he's using a Michaela. So we can see, clearly see a Michaela right here. So a Michaela, this is a plus 10 Michaela, extremely future proof. A Michaela to Alec. So it's a plus 4 Alec, definitely he's going to benefit from the Atrocious Wrath. So let's have a look at the true power of Alec. Okay, so he's using Alec, Victor, and who's the other one? Foxy. So this is a very interesting formation for sure. I've never seen a formation like this. First time I'm seeing a guy use Victor as well. Plus 10 Victor! Oh god, look at this. Consume HP. Oh, oh my god, 14,000 damage from that Victor. That is insane. That is insane. A lot of damage. Well, too bad Ceres has Vital. Yeah, when you go Vital on Ceres, it's just bad against uh, against Asmod. But this is how it works. Uh, look at that Alex HP is slightly reduced. So slight reduction right there. That's more than enough to activate the Atrocious Wrath. Boom! Okay, very strong right there. Okay, so too bad this Alec is um, like basically stuck with my Lucius in the middle, but otherwise the Alec would have been displaying an in intense amount of power. Okay, as more 1k all that. So 7.2k easily. No buffs. Or is there a buff? I didn't notice. Yeah, there's a buff for Mary still. But yeah, look at that Alec consistently going to be able to one-shot almost anyone. Alright, so that's a bunch of good examples. Hopefully, if you guys decided to go ahead and obtain Alec as your legendary, make sure to keep in mind that if you're looking to invest him all the way to plus 3, which is his optimal level, like the best output damage that he will get, make sure to invest in a Michaela as well so that you can perform the combo with the Atrocious Wrath that's going to be insanely good. Alright guys, that's going to be it for today's video. Let me know what you guys think of Alec. As always, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, give this video a like and I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a nice day. Goodbye.